Israel strikes inside Iran, escalating tensions in the region. In a move that threatens to deepen the already tense situation in the Middle East, Israel has reportedly carried out a strike inside Iran, according to a U.S. official speaking to CNN. The target of the strike is said not to be nuclear-related, though details on the specific target remain unclear at this time. Reports indicate that Iran's air defense systems were activated in multiple locations following three explosions heard near the airport and an army base in the Iranian city of Isfahan early Friday morning, as reported by state media. The explosions occurred near a military base housing fighter jets in the northwest part of Isfahan. Iranian sources have suggested that the defense activation was in response to a possible drone incursion. Initial reports from the FARS news agency indicate that a military radar may have been a target of the blast, which also resulted in damage to office buildings in the vicinity. Tensions between Israel and Iran have been escalating, with recent events marking a significant escalation in hostilities. Last week, Iran launched an unprecedented attack on Israel, which it claimed was retaliation for a suspected Israeli airstrike on Iran's consulate in Syria. The situation has placed the region on edge, with both sides making ominous threats of further action. In response to the recent Israeli strike, Iran's Foreign Minister Hossein Ami Amir Abdullahian warned that any further military action by Israel would be met with an immediate and maximum level response. This statement comes amid heightened concerns of a wider conflict erupting in the region. The United States, while not directly involved in the recent strikes, has been closely monitoring the situation and has reportedly been urging Israel to exercise restraint. President Joe Biden characterized the recent Iranian attack on Israel as unprecedented and emphasized the need for de-escalation. The impact of the strike is already being felt on the ground, with reports of outgoing flights from several Iranian airports being canceled. Flight tracking data shows multiple flights being diverted over Iranian airspace indicating disruptions to air travel in the region. As the situation continues to unfold, there are growing concerns about the potential for further escalation and the impact it could have on stability in the Middle East. Hezbollah signals determination amid escalating tensions with Israel. In a rare and exclusive interview with NBC News, Naim Qasem, Hezbollah's second-in-command, conveyed the group's stance amid escalating tensions along Lebanon's southern border with Israel. Qasem emphasized Hezbollah's resolve not to escalate the months-long firefight, but underscored their readiness to respond in kind to any Israeli aggression. Qasem laid blame on Israel and the United States for perpetuating a cycle of tit-for-tat attacks that have resulted in casualties and displaced civilians on both sides of the border. He criticized what he perceived as provocative actions by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and U.S. President Joe Biden expressing surprise at the duration of the conflict. Hezbollah's comments come in the midst of heightened tensions following an unprecedented retaliatory missile and drone barrage against Israel by Iran. Israel, in turn, reportedly carried out a strike inside Iran, further raising the stakes in the region's volatile dynamics. The conflict between Israel and Hezbollah predates the recent escalation involving Iran, with Hezbollah estimated to possess a significant arsenal of rockets, missiles, drones, and other military assets. The group's origins trace back to the early 1980s during the Lebanese Civil War, and it has since positioned itself as a powerful Shia political party and militant organization with strong ties to Iran. Recent attacks attributed to Hezbollah against northern Israel have intensified the conflict, with the group claiming responsibility for strikes targeting Israeli soldiers. Despite the gravity of the situation, Qasem stressed Hezbollah's adherence to the current rules of engagement, but warned of a proportional response to any Israeli escalation. While both sides have largely respected these rules, senior Israeli officials have issued warnings of dire consequences for Lebanon should Hezbollah escalate further. Qasem acknowledged Hezbollah's strategic objectives, suggesting that the group's actions are intended to divert Israeli focus from Gaza to Lebanon's southern border. In light of ongoing tensions, Qasem affirmed Hezbollah's readiness for a full confrontation should Israel choose to escalate the conflict. However, he reiterated Hezbollah's preference for maintaining the current balance of engagement along the border. 
As the situation continues to evolve, the risk of further escalation remains high, with the potential for broader regional implications. U.S. vetoes U.N. resolution on Palestinian membership, escalating diplomatic tensions. In a significant diplomatic development, the United States exercised its veto power in the United Nations Security Council to block a resolution that would have facilitated full UN membership for Palestine. The vote saw 12 members in favor of the resolution, with the US casting the sole opposing vote and two abstentions from the United Kingdom and Switzerland. The resolution, widely supported by many nations, aimed to recommend Palestine's admission as the 194th member of the United Nations to the General Assembly, where veto powers do not apply. With approximately 140 countries already recognizing Palestine, its admission to the UN would likely have garnered overwhelming support. U.S. Deputy Ambassador Robert Wood explained the veto as a reflection of the U.S. stance that Palestinian statehood should be achieved through direct negotiations between the concerned parties rather than through unilateral actions at the United Nations. The U.S. has consistently emphasized the need for dialogue and diplomacy in resolving the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Palestinian representatives expressed disappointment at the veto but remained resolute in their pursuit of statehood. Palestinian UN Ambassador Riyad Mansour affirmed their determination, asserting that the state of Palestine is inevitable and urging continued efforts towards its realization. This marks the second attempt by Palestinians to secure full UN membership, with the previous attempt in 2011 failing to garner sufficient support in the Security Council. Despite this setback, Palestinians successfully upgraded their status to a non-member observer state in 2012, paving the way for increased international recognition and participation in international organizations. Algerian Ambassador Amar Benjama, representing the Arab bloc, characterized Palestine's admission as a crucial step towards rectifying historical injustices and stressed the potential for peace to emerge from inclusion rather than exclusion. While the U.S. cited unresolved questions regarding Palestine's statehood criteria, Israeli Ambassador Gilad Erdan criticized the resolution as disconnected from realities on the ground and warned of potential consequences for future dialogue. The veto comes amid heightened tensions in the region, with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict remaining a central focus. Efforts to revive stalled negotiations have faced numerous obstacles, including divergent political agendas and entrenched positions on both sides. As the international community grapples with the implications of the U.S. veto, the path towards a lasting resolution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict remains uncertain, with diplomatic efforts likely to face continued challenges in the foreseeable future. House Democrats divided over resolution condemning Iran's airstrikes on Israel. A resolution condemning Iran's recent airstrikes on Israel saw overwhelming support in the House of Representatives, passing by a margin of 404 to 14. However, the vote highlighted divisions within the Democratic Party, with 13 Democrats, including prominent members of the squad, such as Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Ilhan Omar, voting against the measure. The resolution not only condemned Iran's actions, but also affirmed U.S. support for Israel's right to respond to the attack as it deems necessary. Only one House Republican, Rep. Thomas Massey, voted against the bill. House Majority Whip Tom Emmer criticized the Democrats who opposed the resolution, accusing them of prioritizing animosity towards Israel over supporting a key ally in the Middle East. Emmer's statement underscored the political tensions surrounding the issue within the House. The Democrats who voted against the resolution represent a faction critical of the U.S.'s close relationship with Israel, particularly in light of Israel's military actions in Gaza. The ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas has intensified these divisions within the Democratic Party. Meanwhile, House Republicans have taken a firm stance in support of Israel, distancing themselves from the Democratic discord. They have introduced multiple bills affirming U.S. support for Israel and condemning Iran in response to the recent escalation of tensions in the region. The vote and subsequent statements from lawmakers reflect the complexities of U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East and the challenges of navigating bipartisan consensus on issues related to Israel and Iran.
CIA director warns of dire consequences without increased military support for Ukraine. CIA director Bill Burns issued a stark warning on Thursday, cautioning that Ukraine could face a significant risk of losing the ongoing war against Russia by the end of the year if the United States does not provide additional military assistance. His remarks come amidst ongoing deliberations in Congress regarding a long-delayed aid package for Kiev. Burns emphasized the critical importance of military support for Ukraine, both in practical terms on the battlefield and psychologically for the Ukrainian forces. He highlighted the urgency of providing this assistance to bolster Ukraine's capacity to resist Russian aggression. Without supplemental aid, Burns warned of a potentially dire outcome for Ukraine, suggesting that they could face significant losses on the battlefield or be compelled to accept terms dictated by Russian President Vladimir Putin. The dire assessment underscores the high stakes involved in the conflict and the urgency of addressing Ukraine's military needs. The Biden administration has been pushing for the passage of the aid package in Congress, seizing on recent geopolitical developments to rally support. The legislation, which includes aid for both Ukraine and Israel, has faced political obstacles, but efforts are underway to advance it, with the Ukraine aid portion expected to be voted on soon. Burns did not elaborate on the specifics of what constitutes a loss for Ukraine but he emphasized the need to prevent further territorial encroachment by Russia. He cited the critical shortage of basic ammunition and military equipment faced by Ukrainian forces, underscoring the urgent need for assistance to prevent future setbacks on the battlefield. The situation in Ukraine remains fluid, with the prospect of increased Russian aggression looming large. The outcome of congressional deliberations on the aid package will likely have significant implications for the course of the conflict and the security of the region. EU expresses concern over potential Chinese support to Russia amid Ukraine conflict. Valdis Dombrovskis, the executive vice president of the European Commission, has raised alarms over indications that China may be supplying components to Russia that could be utilized in military applications. Dombrovskis highlighted concerns that China might escalate shipments if Western opposition to Russia's actions in Ukraine weakens. During a visit to Washington, Dombrovskis emphasized the importance of securing long-delayed U.S. aid to Ukraine and discussed efforts to crack down on sanctions evasion against Russia in collaboration with the United States. Recent reports from U.S. officials have shed light on materials China has allegedly provided to Russia, including drone and missile technology satellite imagery, and machine tools, which contribute to Russia's military buildup in its ongoing conflict in Ukraine. Dombrovskis underscored the EU's unease regarding China's actions concerning Ukraine, particularly concerning recent indications of component shipments to Russia. While the supplied equipment consists of dual-use items rather than direct weaponry, the EU views these actions as significant and emphasizes the necessity of reinforcing Western support for Ukraine. The EU official cautioned that a lack of resolve from the West in confronting Russian aggression and imposing sanctions could lead to dire consequences. He stressed the urgency of maintaining a firm stance and providing robust support to Ukraine in the face of ongoing challenges. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is anticipated to address similar concerns during his upcoming visit to China. The U.S has previously cautioned China against aiding Moscow's military efforts, particularly following Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. In response to these allegations, a spokesperson from the Chinese embassy reiterated that China is not directly involved in the Ukraine crisis and emphasized the importance of maintaining normal trade relations between China and Russia. The situation underscores the complex geopolitical dynamics at play amid the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, with implications for global security and strategic alliances. Alleged plot to assassinate Ukrainian president uncovered, Polish man arrested for espionage. Polish prosecutors have announced the arrest of a Polish man, identified only as Pawel K under Polish privacy laws, on suspicion of espionage and involvement in a plot to assassinate Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. According to Poland's National Prosecutor's Office, 
Powell K. was allegedly prepared to pass sensitive airport security information to Russian military intelligence agents. The arrested individual was reportedly seeking direct contact with Russian operatives involved in the conflict in Ukraine with intentions to provide detailed information about the Rzeszow Yeshyanka Airport in southeastern Poland. This airport serves as a crucial gateway for international military and humanitarian supplies destined for Ukraine, as well as for leaders and politicians traveling to and from the country. Notably, the airport is under the control of U.S. troops. If convicted, Powell K. could face a sentence of up to eight years in prison, according to the statement from the National Prosecutor's Office. The arrest was made possible through close cooperation with Ukrainian prosecutors and security services, who provided vital information and evidence. In a related development in Germany, prosecutors announced the arrest of two German-Russian men suspected of espionage. One of the individuals is accused of plotting attacks on potential targets, including U.S. military facilities, with the aim of disrupting aid efforts for Ukraine. The arrests were made in the city of Bayreuth in Bavaria. These incidents underscore heightened concerns over espionage activities and potential threats posed by foreign agents amid the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. European countries, including Poland, have been vigilant in monitoring and responding to such activities particularly as tensions in the region remain high. Poland, a staunch supporter of Ukraine and President Zelensky, has demonstrated its commitment to countering Russia's aggression and safeguarding regional stability in the face of ongoing challenges. The arrests highlight the importance of international cooperation in combating espionage and addressing security threats in the context of the Ukraine conflict. Congress set to pass long-stalled aid package for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. After prolonged delays, Congress is poised to approve a comprehensive aid package for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, with House Democrats rallying behind Speaker Mike Johnson's plan to overcome opposition from conservative Republicans. The House is expected to conduct a series of votes on Saturday to advance the aid package, with the Senate likely to follow suit next week. The proposed legislation closely mirrors the $95 billion foreign aid package previously passed by the Senate in February, with some adjustments. House Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries emphasized the importance of prioritizing national security needs and ensuring swift action on the aid package. Once approved by Congress and signed into law by President Biden, the administration is prepared to promptly deliver aid to Ukraine. Johnson, facing opposition from the House Freedom Caucus, will rely on Democratic votes to advance the plan, reminiscent of previous instances where minority Democrats joined forces with Republicans to pass crucial legislation. The aid package includes provisions for national security, sanctions, and economic assistance with bipartisan support. Critics have raised concerns about provisions allowing the confiscation of Russian dollar assets, potentially impacting the status of the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency. Additionally, the legislation mandates that China-based ByteDance Lilted divest its popular social media app TikTok or face a ban, albeit with a deadline extending beyond the upcoming U.S. elections. Sanctions on Iranian oil are also included although expedited natural gas exports were omitted due to objections from Democrats. In a potential challenge to Johnson's leadership, Georgia Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene could initiate a motion to oust the Speaker, with support from conservative colleagues. However, some moderate Democrats have pledged to defend Johnson against such attempts. Johnson, expressing a commitment to assisting Ukraine in countering Russia's invasion, affirmed his willingness to risk his position in pursuit of the right course of action, citing a belief in peace through strength, reminiscent of Reagan-era Republican principles. President Biden initially requested aid for Ukraine and Israel in October, but partisan disagreements, particularly over immigration policy, stalled progress on the legislation. Despite potential challenges ahead, Congress appears determined to advance the aid package in support of key allies facing significant security challenges. FBI Director warns of Chinese hackers targeting U.S. critical infrastructure. FBI Director Christopher Wray issued a stark warning on Thursday, 
revealing that Chinese government-linked hackers have infiltrated U.S. critical infrastructure and are poised to strike at a moment's notice. Speaking at the 2024 Vanderbilt Summit on Modern Conflict and Emerging Threats, Ray detailed an ongoing hacking campaign dubbed Volt Typhoon, which has targeted American companies across vital sectors, including telecommunications, energy, water, and pipelines. According to Ray, the Volt Typhoon campaign has targeted 23 pipeline operators, raising concerns about potential disruptions to crucial infrastructure. He emphasized China's development of capabilities to inflict physical damage on U.S. infrastructure strategically timed to induce panic and sow chaos among civilians. Attributing specific intent to these cyber intrusions remains challenging, Ray noted, but he underscored their alignment with China's broader geopolitical goals, particularly its efforts to deter U.S. intervention in defense of Taiwan. China regards Taiwan as part of its territory and has not ruled out the use of force to reunify it with the mainland, a stance vehemently opposed by Taiwan's government. Responding to allegations of state involvement in the hacking campaign, a Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson denied any connection between Volt Typhoon and the Chinese government, attributing it instead to a criminal ransomware group. The Chinese embassy in Washington echoed this sentiment, accusing the U.S. of politicizing cybersecurity issues and deflecting blame. Ray highlighted the sophisticated tactics employed by Chinese hackers, including the use of botnets to conceal their activities across a global network of compromised computers and servers. Previous reports from leading technology and cybersecurity firms, including Microsoft and Google, have linked Volt Typhoon to China, further reinforcing concerns about the scale and scope of Chinese cyber espionage efforts. As the U.S. grapples with mounting cyber threats, Ray's warning serves as a sobering reminder of the ongoing battle to protect critical infrastructure from malicious actors seeking to undermine national security and stability. China opens new air routes near Taiwan-controlled islands, prompting anger from Taipei. China's aviation regulator announced on Friday the establishment of new air routes to the cities of Xiamen and Fuzhou, positioned in close proximity to the Taiwan-controlled islands of Kinmen and Matsu. This move is expected to escalate tensions between Beijing and Taipei, as Taiwan views such actions as provocative and a challenge to its sovereignty. In January, Taiwan expressed outrage after China unilaterally altered a flight path known as M5003 near the sensitive median line in the Taiwan Strait. The newly opened routes to Xiamen and Fuzhou are connected to the M503 flight route. The median line has traditionally served as an informal boundary between Chinese-claimed Taiwan and mainland China, with combat aircraft from both sides refraining from crossing it. However, China disputes the existence of this line and has been increasingly sending its military aircraft over it in a bid to assert its sovereignty over Taiwan. The decision to open flight routes towards Taiwan represents another assertive move by Beijing to pressure Taipei into acknowledging its territorial claims. Although China had announced plans to open west-to-east routes in January, it had not specified when they would become operational until now. The Chinese civil aviation regulator stated on Friday that these routes are now in use and hinted at further airspace optimization around Fuzhou Airport starting May 16. China justified these changes as meeting the developmental needs of flights along the Chinese coast, ensuring flight safety improving response capabilities to weather conditions and enhancing normal flight operations. Taiwan has yet to issue an official response to these developments. However, in the past, Taiwan has accused China of endangering aviation safety and utilizing flight routes for political leverage against Taipei. Both Kinmen and Matsu Islands maintain regular flights to Taiwan, and Taiwan prohibits Chinese aircraft from entering its controlled airspace around these islands. Flights between Taiwan and China's Xiamen and Fuzhou currently take a longer route along the strait, avoiding direct passage. This latest move by China follows previous instances of friction over flight paths, including the opening of the M503 route in 2018 without prior consultation with Taiwan, contravening a 2015 agreement. The democratically elected government of Taiwan continues to reject China's sovereignty claims, advocating for the right of the Taiwanese people to determine their own future. Apple removes WhatsApp and threads from China App Store. 
due to national security concerns. Apple announced on Friday that it had taken down Meta Platform's WhatsApp and Threads from its app store in China, following orders from the Chinese government, which cited national security concerns as the reason behind the directive. While other Meta apps such as Facebook, Instagram, and Messenger remained accessible on the Chinese app store, WhatsApp and Threads were notably absent. The removal raised questions about the specific security issues associated with these two apps especially since many other popular Western developed apps, including YouTube and X, were still available for download. In response to inquiries, Apple clarified that the Cyberspace Administration of China had ordered the removal of WhatsApp and threads based on national security concerns. Apple emphasized its obligation to comply with the laws of the countries in which it operates, even if it disagrees with them. Meta, the parent company of WhatsApp and Threads, declined to comment and redirected queries to Apple. The Cyberspace Administration of China did not immediately respond to requests for comment. While WhatsApp and Threads are no longer accessible on the China App Store, they remain available for download on Apple's other app storefronts. Chinese users with iCloud accounts registered in other countries can still access these apps by downloading them from international app stores. Some experts speculated that the Chinese government's action against WhatsApp and threads could be linked to a new regulation implemented last August. This regulation requires all apps available in China to register with the government or face removal. The deadline for registration was the end of March with enforcement starting on April 1st. This is not the first time Apple has removed apps from its China App Store due to regulatory concerns. In 2017, Apple removed the New York Times News app for violating local regulations amid increasing news censorship in China. The app remains unavailable on Apple's China App Store to this day. Similarly, last year, Apple removed several chat GPT-like apps as Beijing was formulating local regulations concerning generative artificial intelligence AI services. The removal of WhatsApp and threads from the China App Store was initially reported by the Wall Street Journal. Australia unveils first national defense strategy amid growing tensions with China. Australia has unveiled its inaugural national defense strategy, highlighting a significant shift towards deterring China's coercive tactics in a region increasingly perceived as edging towards conflict. Defense Minister Richard Marles presented the 80-page document, which offers a sobering assessment of Pacific security and outlines a substantial increase in defense expenditure to modernize Australia's military capabilities. Marles emphasized the departure from optimistic assumptions prevalent in defense planning since the end of the Cold War, stating, The optimistic assumptions that guided defense planning after the end of the Cold War are long gone. The strategy underscores concerns about China's use of coercive tactics to advance its strategic objectives and emphasizes Australia's vulnerability to threats aimed at disrupting trade and blocking access to critical air and sea routes. Describing Australia as a maritime trading island nation, Marles highlighted the potential for adversaries to inflict significant harm without physically invading Australian soil. In response, the strategy pivots towards developing a deterrent force focused on safeguarding Australia's immediate region rather than maintaining a military capable of global operations. Central to the strategy is the plan to construct a fleet of stealthy nuclear-powered submarines, triple-key missile capabilities, and expand the surface combatant fleet to bolster Australia's defense posture. Marles emphasized the goal of making any attack against Australia's interests exceedingly costly and perilous for adversaries. Defense spending is set to increase from around 2% of GDP to 2.4% within a decade, fueling an arms race across the Pacific, with countries like China, South Korea, and Japan ramping up military investments. Amid this backdrop, Australia anticipates heightened risks of conflict in regions such as the Taiwan Strait, the South and East China Seas, or along the India border. Marles highlighted the disappearance of the perceived luxury of a 10-year window for strategic warning time, signaling a fundamental shift in Australia's strategic outlook. In response to queries about Canberra's strategy, Beijing urged Australia to refrain from routinely accusing China and emphasized China's commitment to regional peace and stability.
Foreign Ministry spokesperson Lin Jian emphasized China's non-threatening intentions and called for Australia to adopt a correct understanding of China's development and strategic objectives. The unveiling of Australia's national defense strategy marks a significant recalibration of its defense posture in response to evolving geopolitical dynamics and growing tensions with China. Repepper Jake LaTurner announces decision not to seek re-election, citing family priorities. Repepper Jake LaTurner, Arcan, revealed on Thursday that he will not pursue re-election in November, joining a growing list of departing members leaving Congress at the end of their terms. LaTurner, aged 36, disclosed that he is stepping away from the House to prioritize spending more time with his family, particularly his young children. He affirmed his commitment to continue serving until the conclusion of his term in January. In a statement, LaTurner expressed gratitude to the constituents of Kansas for the opportunity to serve in the United States as House of Representatives, describing it as the professional honor of his life. However, he underscored the importance of focusing on his family during this crucial period when his children are still in their formative years. Acknowledging the prevalent dysfunction in Congress, particularly amid bitter disputes over leadership positions and legislative impasses, LaTurner clarified that this was not the primary reason for his departure. While he found the current state of affairs distressing, he remained optimistic about the country's future and the possibility of overcoming existing challenges and divisions. LaTurner emphasized that he will not seek any other office this year or pursue state-level positions in the 2026 elections. However, he did not rule out future involvement in politics beyond that time frame expressing hope that with new experiences and perspectives, he could continue advocating for issues he cares deeply about. The 2nd Congressional District, represented by LaTurner, encompasses central Kansas City and a significant portion of the eastern region of the state. As a solidly red district, Republicans are anticipated to retain the seat in the upcoming November elections. LaTurner's decision to step away from Congress underscores the personal sacrifices often faced by elected officials and highlights the importance of balancing public service with family commitments. Trump holds slim lead over Biden in Wisconsin poll, setting stage for potential rematch. In a new poll examining a potential rematch between former President Donald Trump and President Joe Biden in the pivotal state of Wisconsin, Trump is shown to have a narrow lead over his Democratic counterpart. According to the Marquette Law School poll released on Wednesday, Trump commands 51% support among registered voters in Wisconsin, while Biden trails closely behind at 49%. Among likely voters, Trump maintains the same two-point advantage, with both candidates polling at 51% and 49% respectively. When considering third-party and independent candidates, Trump retains a slight lead, garnering 41% support among registered voters, compared to Biden's 40%. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., running as an independent Democrat, captures 13% of the vote, while Green Party candidate Jill Stein and independent progressive Cornell West secure 3% and 2%, respectively. Among likely voters in the multi-candidate field, Trump maintains a narrow lead with 42% support, followed closely by Biden at 41%. Kennedy, Stein, and West secure 12%, Frint, and 1%, respectively. The poll underscores the shifting dynamics in Wisconsin, a traditionally Democratic stronghold that Trump narrowly won in 2016 and lost by a slim margin to Biden in 2020. Wisconsin's significance as a battleground state underscores its pivotal role in determining national electoral outcomes. Trump's advantage in the poll is particularly pronounced among independents, with 59% expressing support for the former president compared to 41% for Biden. However, Biden maintains a strong lead among Democratic voters, while Trump commands overwhelming support from Republicans. Enthusiasm for voting appears to favor Trump, with respondents expressing greater enthusiasm for voting, indicating a preference for the former president over Biden by a margin of 59% to 41%. The poll also sheds light on the closely watched Senate race in Wisconsin, with Democratic incumbent Sen Ronan Law. Tammy Baldwin leading Republican challenger Eric Havdi among registered voters by a margin of 52% to 47%. However, among likely voters, the race is deadlocked at 50% for each candidate. 
As Wisconsin emerges as a critical battleground in both the presidential and Senate races, the latest poll underscores the tight competition and the potential impact on national political dynamics. The Marquette Law School poll surveyed 814 registered voters with a margin of error of plus or minus 4.8 percentage points. Trump considers middle-class tax cut ahead of potential White House return. Sources familiar with discussions within former President Donald Trump's circle have revealed that he is contemplating a new middle-class tax cut should he secure another term in the White House. This initiative, aimed at appealing to voters, could potentially exacerbate the country's already substantial budget deficit. Among the proposals under consideration is a reduction in the federal payroll tax, a move that could divert funds away from the Social Security and Medicare trust funds. While Trump has shown openness to the idea, no definitive commitments have been made. The idea of slashing the payroll tax was previously floated by Trump's economic team in 2020 as a strategy to stimulate the economy during the depths of the COVID-19 pandemic. However, the administration ultimately opted for temporary deferrals in payroll tax payments. Despite the economic recovery since then, discussions surrounding tax policy continue with other potential measures including an increase in the standard deduction on year-end tax returns and a reduction in the marginal income tax rate for middle-income households. These talks, although informal, underscore a broader aim to benefit the middle class rather than households below a specific income threshold. However, the feasibility of any tax measures ultimately hinges on the composition of the next Congress. Notable figures involved in these discussions include conservative economist Stephen Moore and former National Economic Council Director Larry Kudlow, both of whom are close advisors to Trump. While tax cuts may spur short-term economic growth, experts caution against potential risks, including exacerbating inflation and increasing the national debt, which currently stands at over $34 trillion. The timing of these discussions is notable, occurring as the economy experiences strong growth and high inflation. Critics argue that injecting additional stimulus into the economy at this juncture could be unwarranted. Trump's campaign has signaled his intent to extend certain provisions of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, TCJA, if he returns to office. However, some experts question the necessity of further tax cuts given the current economic climate. Designing a tax cut specifically targeting the middle class presents challenges, as evidenced by the contentious debate surrounding the TCJA. Nonetheless, the prospect of a federal payroll tax reduction remains a focal point in ongoing discussions. As Trump and his advisors deliberate on potential tax policies, the outcome of the November general election will likely shape the direction of fiscal policy in the United States.